Scotland and he he chose uh, Gaur Bhagwan Prabhu and uh, Daya Rupa as instruments, uh, his instruments to do that. So without taking any more of time, uh, I'll let uh, Prabhuji start the class. And after the class is over, during the Q&A or during the comments, maybe they both can share briefly um, how they have been, uh, you know, making attempts to uh, reach Krishna consciousness in Iceland. Thank you very much for joining Gaur Bhagwan Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So nice to be with all of you today. So please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So today I chose Canto 1, Chapter 15, text number 12. I don't have uh, I don't have it on my screen. I don't I hope you have a book or some way to read the verse if you want them. Otherwise, you can, I'm of course reading it, so you can always listen just to me reading. It's, can you send uh, tell me the verse number, Prabhu? I can share in the screen. It's one fifteen twelve. One sixteen twelve. Fifteen one. First canto, fifteenth chapter, twelfth verse. Oh, yeah. Bhagwan Prabhu, he'll take care of the technical details. Don't worry. You can uh, read and uh, Rasraj Prabhu will do it. Okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, just one question regarding the Sanskrit. Am I just reading it once? How does it work? Uh, Rasraj Prabhu, how do devotees do it? Do we repeat? Prabhu, we yes, repeat. Yes, yes, Mataji, we repeat like... Uh, uh, the, as is well, the regular, the devotees will repeat, then you can continue. Okay. So, God, so God, God, God for word also. Yeah. Repeat, uh, repeat. So, you can give few chances. Okay. Uh, okay. Actually, Veda base is down. Uh, so, you said at one point. Can you post it, Prabhu? Just type it uh, 1.16. I just missing that. 1.15.12, Prabhu. 15, right? 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Rasraj Prabhu. He'll, he'll prefer reading. He uh, He's not very much into Zoom. So we can just hear attentively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually, it's the first time I actually use Zoom to give a class. I, I So far, we only use Facebook Live. Is okay. that correct, Prabhu? Yeah, that's good. Okay, go ahead. Prabhu, can you Zoom? Okay, yeah, go ahead. How do you close this? Okay, I'm going to close my chat window. Yat chet yasata bhagavan yuti shula panir. Yat te jasha bhagavan yuti shuta panir. Shvisma pita sakiri jostram adan nijam me. Vishwam <laughs> Rapto Mahendra Bhavane Mahadashanardam Yapche Jasata Bhavan Yuti Shula Panir Yeti Jasata Bhagavan Yuti Shula Panir Vishwam, sorry, Vishma Pita Sakiri Jostram Adan Nijamme Vishma 
Anye pichaham amunai vakale varena. Anye pichaham amunai vakale varena. Prapto mahendra bhavane mahat asanardham. Prapto mahendra bhavane mahat asanardham. Someone is going to say this or am I just going to continue? Anyone would like to? Yeah, go ahead. Yate jasata bhagavan yudhishula panil. Yate jasata bhagavan yudhishula panil. Yudhishula panil. Vishwam pita sagri jamadani jammi. Bisma pita pita sagari josram adam ne jamme anni picha ham amunai vakale varena anni picha ham amunai vakale varena prapto mahendra bhavane maharasanardham prapto mahendra bhavane maharasanardham Yat. Yat. By whose? By whose? By whose? Te chasa. Te chasa. By influence. By influence. Atha. Atha. At one time. At one time. Bhagavan. 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 The personality of God. The personality of God. The personality of God. Shiva. Lord Shiva. Shiva. Yudhi. 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 In the battle. In the, in battle. the battle. Tulapani. 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 One who has a trident in his hand. One who, One has, who has a trident in his hand. One who has a trident in his hand. Vishma Pita. Vishma Pita. Astonished. 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 Sakirija, Sakirija, along with the daughter of the Himalayan mountains, along with the daughter, the daughter of the Himalayan mountains, mountains. Astram, Astram, Astram. Weapon. 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 Adad, Adad, awarded, awarded, Nijam, of his own. Of his own home. May. May. Unto me. Unto me. Unto me. Anye api. Anye api. api. So also others. So, so also, also others. others. So also others. Cha. 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 And. 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 Aham. 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 Myself. 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 Amuna. 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 By this. By, By this. this. Eva. Eva. Definitely. 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 Kalevarena. Kalevarena. By the body. By, By the body. body. By the body. Raptaha. 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 Obtain. 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 Maha Intra Bhavane. Maha Indra Bhavane. In the house of Indra Dev. In the house of Indra Dev. Mahat. 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 Great. Great. Asana Ardham. Asana Ardham. Asana Ardham. Half elevated seat. Half elevated seat. Half elevated seat. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. It was by His influence only that in a fight I was able to astonish the personality of God, Lord Shiva, and His wife, the daughter of Mount Himalaya. Thus He, Lord Shiva, became pleased with me and awarded me His own weapon. All the demigods also delivered their respective weapons to me. And in addition, I was able to reach the heavenly planets in this present body and was allowed a half-elevated seat. 
purport. By the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, all the demigods, including Lord Shiva, were pleased with Arjuna. The idea is that one who is favored by Lord Shiva or any other demigod may not necessarily be favored by the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Ravana was certainly a great devotee of Lord Shiva, but he could not be saved from the wrath of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Ramachandra. And there are many instances like that in the histories of the Puranas. But there is, here is an instance where we can see that Lord Shiva became pleased even in the fight with Arjuna. The devotees of the Supreme Lord know how to respect the demigods, but the devotees of the demigods sometimes foolishly think that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is no greater than the demigods. By such a conception, one becomes an offender and ultimately meets with the same end as Ravana and others. The instances described by Arjuna during his friendly dealings with Lord Sri Krishna are instructive for all who may be convinced by the lessons that one can achieve all favors simply by pleasing the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Whereas the devotees or worshippers of the demigods may only achieve partial benefits, which are also perishable just as the demigods themselves are. Another significance of the present verse is that Arjuna, by the grace of Lord Sri Krishna, was able to reach the heavenly planets even with the self same body and was honored by this heavenly demigod Indradeva of being seated with him half elevated. One can reach the heavenly planets by the pious acts recommended in the Shastras in the category of fruitive activities. As stated in this Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter 21st verse, when the reactions of such pious acts are spent, the enjoyer is again degraded to this earthly planet. The moon is also on a level of, with the heavenly planets, and only persons who have performed virtues only performing sacrifices, giving charity and undergoing severe austerities can be allowed to enter into the heavenly planets after the duration of the life of the body. Arjuna was allowed to enter into the heavenly planets in the self-same body simply by the grace of the Lord. Otherwise, it is not possible to do so. The present attempt to enter into the heavenly planets by the modern sciences will certainly prove futile because such scientists are not on the level of Arjuna. They are ordinary human beings without any assets of sacrifice, charity, or austerities. The material body is influenced by the three most of material nature, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance, and the symptoms for such influences for such influence are exhibited in their becoming very lustful, uh, sorry, lusty and greedy. Such that created fellows can hardly approach the higher planetary systems. Above the heavenly planets, there are many other planets also, which only those who are influenced by goodness can reach. In the heavenly and other planets within the universe, the inhabitants are all highly intelligent, many more times than human beings, and they are all pious and the higher and highest modes of goodness. They are all devotees of the Lord, and although their goodness is not unadulterated, Still, they, have no, they are known as demigods, possessing the maximum amount of good qualities possible within the material world. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Jnan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Kurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manubhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupakata mahyam tadati sva patanti kam. Mante ham sri guru sri uta padakamalam sri gurun vaishnavam sya sri rupam sakrajatam sahakanara kunatanvitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadhutam parichana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam sri ratha krishna padam sahakana lalita shivishakan vitam sya he krishna Karuna Sintho Dina Bandho Chakat Pade Go Pesha Go Pika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Kapta Kanchana Gaurangi Rathe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpa Tarupyascha Kripa Sintu Pya Evacha Paditanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shiat Veta Gadad Harshivas Adi Gaurav Hakta Vrinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ya Teja Sata Bhagavan Yudishula Panir, Vishma Pita Sa Girijo Stram Andam Nijam Me, Ane Pichaham Amunai Vakale Vareina, Prapto Mahendra Bhavane Mahat Asanardham. It was by his influence only that in, in a fight I was able to astonish the personality of God, Lord Shiva, and his wife, the daughter of M Mount Himalaya. Thus he, Lord Shiva, became pleased with me and avoided me his own weapon. Other demigods also delivered their respective weapons to me, and in addition, I was able to reach the heavenly planets in this present body and was allowed a half-elevated seat. Hare Krishna. So, uh, I, I mean... I picked this verse because I was just recently listening to um, a class or a seminar on the Bhagavatam and this, the points made uh, on this verse were uh, it kind of, uh, it is kind of an epiphany for me personally. And so I will maybe dwell on that, those points the longest in this class. Uh, this, since we are just picking verses out of Bhagavatam, so it's maybe good to give a context to this, um, this verse. It is spoken by, this verse is spoken by Arjuna, and Arjuna has just returned from Dvaraka, where he discovered that Krishna has left the planet. And so he, uh, he has just reached back to Hastinapur, or Indraprastha, and he's telling Yudhishthir, his brother, older brother, and the emperor, that the news about um, that Krishna has left, departed the world. And he's remembering Krishna and appreciating Krishna, all the mercies that Krishna has bestowed upon him during their interactions. So the Pandavas, they um, actually, uh, in the Mahaparata, if you know this story of Mahaparata, the, uh, there was a point in the battle where Jayadrata is actually is touching on this particular verse because in this verse uh, Arjuna is telling he's talking about how Lord Shiva gave him his own weapon which is called the Pashupata Astra so uh, the point in time when actually Arjuna actually used this weapon he only used it one time and this was for killing Jayadrata. So Jayadrata was the, was the uh, uh, king who killed his son, Ashva, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, I, Abhimanyu, yeah. So uh, when the Abhimanyu was surrounded by the, uh, I think, seven fighters, Jayadrata was the one who actually shot the final arrow and killed his son. So Arjuna, he actually, he, got, he became so upset that he took a vow that unless I kill Jayatrata tomorrow, by the end of the day tomorrow, then I will enter fire. So the spies of Duryodhana, they actually heard this. They actually, one of them was there and listened to this declaration of Arjuna. So, so then um, Duryodhana was very excited, okay, Easy way to get rid of Arjuna, we just put Jayadrata at the very back of the army and we arranged the whole army in like a needle formation so that uh, Arjuna can, can, will, will not even be able to, to make his way towards Jayadrata. Even if he fights the whole day, he, will not, he won't be able to even reach Jayadrata. And by doing that, you will, Arjuna will be done, finished. We don't have to even kill Arjuna. We just let him not fail in his mission. Najuna will have to follow his vow and enter fire, and he will be, will be rid of him. So this was the uh, um, this was the what do you call it um, this background. And then of course Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna, you should first consult with me before you take a vow like that. And and um, he told Krishna told us someone that I cannot I cannot live in this world without Arjuna. Krishna said that I, I cannot live in this world without Arjuna. He's so dear to me that I don't, there's no point of me going on 
in this world if Arjuna is gone. So Krishna had to help Arjuna. In so many ways, he helped Arjuna uh, reach, his, reach this uh, goal of killing Jayadratha at the end of the battle. And this is a long story. I'm not going to repeat the story. But Krishna made that statement about Arjuna. So then, and conversely, as soon as the Pandavas learned that um, Krishna had left the world, then they immediately retired from this world, and they also left this world. So that's actually this chapter is called the Pandavas retired timely. So that's this what happened. They actually all left. They put um, Parikshit in charge of the kingdom, and they went to the Himalayas, and they, they all descended, you know, in their selves and bodies to heaven and to the spiritual world. So this was, uh, so this, this point of interaction that Krishna, just as Arjuna, I mean, just as Krishna is so, is dear to Arjuna more than his own life, Arjuna is more dear to Krishna than Krishna's own life, like that. So, so this is the first thing that comes to mind, just to give the background of the story. But also what Arjuna is saying here, the, the, and the, the points that Prabhupada makes are very, very significant for, for anyone, who, for us, because we are trying to be devotees of Krishna, and we may not always realize uh, the benefit of being a devotee. I mean, what, uh, you know, because you know, we are in the mature world, we have a conditioned mind, the mind is full of impurities that they bubble up, you know, as you go on, that they bubble up, come to the surface, and they, uh, you know, we are fighting our internal battle, and also at the same time, we're also fighting the battle of dealing with the mature world. Um, most of us, if not all of us, we have we have more things to do on just dealing with our sadhana. We have to also, we have jobs, we have uh, businesses to run. Uh, uh, we have children that are growing up and, you know, they also, children are also dealing with the mature world. And we, I mean, we have so many, we are, we, are challenge, we, are, we are faced with so many challenges being because of being in this body, being in this world. And we are also trying to be devoted to Krishna. So we might sometimes forget the benefit of, What's the point of being a devotee? Well, what, what is the, uh, you know, what, how important it is to be a devotee? So he, this is such a wonderful verse to see the contrast between a devotee, one who is very dear to Krishna, one who makes himself dear to Krishna by being fully surrendered to Krishna, and someone who isn't fully surrendered to Krishna. He's either not so surrendered to Krishna or he's not at all Krishna conscious. You know, so, so Arjuna is, is talking about this, that only by his influence, that I, I, I was able to even please for Shiva himself in battle, and Shiva gave me his weapons. And actually, Arjuna, he, he actually got weapons from all the demigods, not just Arjuna. He, all the divine weapons were given to Arjuna. And that was only because of his devotion to Krishna. He, he was just, I mean, Arjuna was just so wonderful in, in every way. I mean, his qualities, his activities, everything was just so wonderful, only because of his connection with Krishna, because of his full surrender, to Krishna, his love for Krishna, as opposed to others. So Prabhupada gives this example of going to heaven. So he gives example of you can only go to heaven if you have uh, done the required austerities, uh, pious activities, charities, and so on. Then you can be elevated to heaven. And when you get there, you can only stay there as long as your, your pious activities are not exhausted. When they're exhausted, you fall from heaven. And then he also talks about the scientists, how they try and go even, and I mean, this is how you go to heaven. And he, there's some people are so foolish, it's like the, he's talking about the modern scientists, they try to go to the heavenly planets, including the moon. Moon is actually the beginning of the heavenly planet. So they try to go there even without any past activities. He's, he's basically saying that they are not in it, they, the scientists, or the modern materialistic leaders, they are not in the mode of goodness even, they're in the mode of passion and ignorance, which is evident by the qualities of lust and greed, lustiness and greed, greediness. And they're trying to reach the planets where everyone is predominantly in the mode of goodness. The demigods are predominantly in the mode of goodness. So, and then, so they, they them themselves have not even acquired the qualities to live in heaven let alone perform the activities required to be elevated there. And they're trying to go there by mechanical means. So, so Prabhupada is giving this contrast, but he's saying that Arjuna actually did not 
specifically make any effort to go to heaven, but he went there anyway because of his connection to Krishna, his full surrender to Krishna. And not just that, he was, I mean, when people go to heaven, usually if you would go to heaven, what would you do there? You would just be one of the, you know, citizens of heaven. You would just be there as a subject of Indra and you will be, you know, you will be enjoy you you have to how do you say you will be enjoying life based on uh, following everybody else. You'd just be an ordinary citizen of heaven. Arjuna actually he went there and he would sit next to Indra on a half elevated seat. Because he was the son of Indra, but so that's why Indra gave him that. But that was not and the main reason was that he was a devotee of Krishna. He didn't go there for his own Sanskrit education. He went there as a he went there uh, as a part of his mission in the Krishna service to, to reduce the burden of the earth, of planet earth. So all these amazing favors, going there, sitting on the half elevated seat, getting all the, all the weapons of Indra, using them to, to um, divide out the enemies of Indra, the Nibhita Kavachas, which he, he killed with a single arrow, like 60,000 demons, he killed with a single arrow. So all these wonderful things Arjuna did, without making any effort to go to heaven separately by doing, you know, some yakyas and this and that. He did, of course, petition Indra because in, Krishna told him to. But, but you know, the, the, I mean, none of the things that Arjuna did in heaven are imaginable by those who even go to, ha who go to heaven, who spend life, uh, you know, they, they spend like a very long time, a lifetime or several lifetimes, performing austerities, giving in charity, uh, um, yeah, doing yakyas, doing sacrifices like that. Uh, yakya, dana, tapa, you know, these are the three things you do to go to heaven. So none of these things are Juna did specifically just to go to heaven. He only followed Krishna's orders and he he went there, had the, you know, had the greatest time you can imagine in heaven. Uh, it got a special treatment and he did. He did acts. He did service for Indra that no, 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 no one else could do. He, you know, he wiped out the Nivita Kavachas. So this is. So Arjuna is is remembering Krishna in this way that I, only by his influence, by his favor, I was able to uh, do all those things. So, so this is the contrast. You know, if you are surrounded to Krishna, you are not the loser. You are. You, you will experience the most wonderful life in Krishna's service. So, um, so you may, it's like now I'm reading this biography of Shama Sundar Prabhu, uh, hunting rhinos with the Swami. Part one, part chasing rhinos with the Swami. So, we, you know, you're reading about how, you know, the bodies in the early days, all they, they, they were just sold out to Prabhupada. You know, and this is actually, you know, we don't have, Arjuna was, was an intimate associate of Krishna. So he speaks about Krishna and that directly, he's serving, directly serving Krishna. Our position is that we are serving the, the servant of Krishna. That's our uh, position. I, I, the other day I was actually in the same seminar, I heard the most wonderful point, how we speak about me and mine. That's the Ahamma Meti. Janasa Mahoyam Ahamma Meti. That in the material world, everything is, is an illusion of me and mine. So my, I'm important, and and I am, you know, the center of everything. And what's important is what's related to me, like my children or my friends or my family, my country, like that. So in the spiritual concept, me is actually Krishna. He is the he is the center. His he is the significant person. He is a distinguished one. Eko you know this. So he is the center. Everything else revolves around him. So a devotee knows that. He doesn't think he's, he knows Krishna is the center. And the mind, to Krishna, the mind are his devotees. So Krishna is, like, in terms of, in Krishna's mind, Krishna is the I, and mind are his devotees, and we belong to the devotees. You know, this is where, that's where we fit in. We are Servants of the servant, Kopi Partur Pata Kamalior Dasa Dasa Anudasa. So 
Our position is to be the servants of the servants of Krishna. That's our eternal, eternal constitutional position. We, are, we, can, we should not aspire to become the, the intimate direct associates of Krishna, but we are, our, our constitutional natural position is to be the servants of the servants of Krishna. And, and the way it manifests for us now is that we are the servants of our spiritual master, and we also serve the other devotees as their servants. And as soon as we step into that position, we become happy and we become satisfied. We actually realize, though, this is who I am, the more we embrace that position. And the more we embrace that position, Krishna also accepts us. And that's actually in the, the highest position, the highest benediction we can ask of Krishna is that he accepts us as the servants of his servants. This is what Maharaj Prataparutra asks, asks of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asks Maharaj Prataparutra to identify himself. So please tell me who you are. Who You have come here to tell me, uh, to give me, share me the nectar of Krishna's pastimes. Please tell me who you are. And, and Maharaj Prataparutra, who, by the way, is a very, 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 very elevated devotee, very special in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, my dear Lord, I am the servant of, this, of your servants. And by the way, he actually went to Mahaprabhu, he only went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after first taking the mercy of all devotees. The devotees sent him to, to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You go ahead and serve Mahaprabhu, massage his feet, and recite the, uh, the five chapters from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Maharaj Prataparuta, he actually, before doing that, he went to all devotees and bowed to them, took the dust from their feet, and that took their blessings. So this is how he went to the to approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him, who are you? He said, I am just a servant of your servants. And my prayer to you is that you accept me as a servant of your servants. And in the purple Prabhupada says that of all the benedictions you can ask of the Lord, there is no higher position than, than this one. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj asked the same benediction from, from the Lord. He asked, in Shingadev, my, my spiritual master saved me, you know, so my, my only aspiration is I, I be, become his servant. So, so this is our position. The way we can apply this, this instruction, we cannot be Arjuna, be directly, you know, the, the, the immediate, intimate friend of Krishna, but our, we serve devotees like Arjuna. And this is how Krishna accepts us. And Krishna says that, Bhakta Chinapriya, we become especially dear to Krishna by doing that. Just like the grandchild is, is even more dear to than the child. He has the child, child but the grandchild is special. So, if you, if, you, if you want to become special in the eyes of Krishna, then become dear to his servants, to the spiritual master and to the, the other disciples of the spiritual master. So back to the story of Shama Sundra. So they, they, had this, they were sold out to Prabhupada to serve Prabhupada. And if you read the pastimes of how many wonderful, just amazing thing happened in, the, in that effort, going to London, how within one year they, Establish a temple. They start. They cut a record with, you know, with Apple Records with the help of help of George Harrison. George Harrison, in turn, made a record, made millions of people chant Hare Krishna. And he went on to go to Bombay, sat on a Pandal program. So I mean, you just the whole title of the book is how how many wonderful things were established, were 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 accomplished by the mercy of Krishna because they were trying to serve his pure devotee, you know. So this is actually the, you know, if you are serving Krishna, if you're just, if you have, a, have this desire to serve with the servant of Krishna, the, the, you know, spiritual master, the previous acharyas and the other devotees, then you are not the loser. You become like Arjuna, you get Krishna, like he just showers you with special favors, his personal favors like that. So this is the instruction we can take. Um, there are other things that, uh, the main point that I actually, actually I'll get come to at last because this is my favorite point. Uh, the, the same point is that the connection of with the Lord versus no connection with the Lord. So Prabhupada mentions here that the, um, you are to, if you're connected with Krishna, you respect the other demigods automatically, whereas the demigods do not automatically, uh, the devotees of demigods Oft, sometimes do not respect Krishna properly. They may not consider him greater than, they may think, consider him an odd demigod or even less than a demigod. And thus, they meet their destruction in that way. They may appear to be successful like, like Ravana was, but they meet their end. Their, their, whatever they get from a demigod is temporary because the demigods themselves are temporary. And 
And if they disrespect Krishna, on top of that, they also, they meet with, with an unfortunate end. So, whereas if you, if you are devoted to Krishna, you will experience wonderful things in this life, and you will get him also at the end. Krishna says that, you know. If you show it to me, then you will, you'll be happy in this life, and you will attain me at the end. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, he mentions this. You know, you not be reft. He's saying that, in the, I think it's the end of the eighth chapter, those who, uh, those who are devoted to devotional service, they, do, they will derive all the benefits derived from doing austerities, giving in charity, and performing pious activities, yakya, yakya, dana, tapa. Yeah, austerities, or sacrifices. Yeah, perform austerities, doing sacrifices, and giving in charity. They, even though they don't do those things separately, just by doing devotional service, they derive all those benefits. But at the end, they also come to me, they get me. So this is the benefit of being a devotee, or being a devotee of the devotee of Krishna. So, so that's the point Prabhupada makes. And the other point is this: that the, uh, that the op, you know the that um, you have to follow the system of the Lord. So there are benefits from being. Actually, I think I'm connected with the main point, which I want to make. The final point is that okay, the operating principle of this world is devotion to Krishna, and I, what I'm talking about is the operating principle of anything. So. The, the reason I found this point so interesting, and this really, really like blew my mind, and you know, the benefit of being in Krishna consciousness is that your mind will keep getting blown, or get, you, you keep getting surprised by so many wonderful points about our philosophy. Our philosophy is unlimited. You can keep learning more things that are like, wow, that's interesting. And you know, you may have heard this point like a million times, but at some point, that particular point like boom, you know, becomes more, understandable to you so so in other words you know every day every day you may hear like the same points repeated over and over again but at, but at some point so one of those points actually becomes wow actually krishna is god you know you know we hear krishna is the supreme personality got it and one day you actually oh my god krishna is the supreme personality got it amazing you, you may you mean that statement may not have meant as much to you it may mean something to you but at some point, it means a lot to you more, and I mean, and we'll keep doing that. So, so this point, which actually Bhaktivedya Puramaran, is my one of my Shiksha gurus, he made this point that the operating principle of everything in this world is devotion to Krishna. And the reason I'm I find it interesting, interesting is that because we are, I mean, currently Krishna consciousness or being a devotee. Or being an ISKCON is like a we are like a subculture in the context of, of the modern culture. We have this modern culture, the modern world, this mainstream consumer society. Of course, you live in most of you live in the United States. So that's like the you know the kingdom there, the uh, the leader, they are the leaders. That culture, American culture is basically taking over the whole world, you know. You know, it's almost like the foreign policy of the United States to make sure that. Nobody is allowed to live their traditional culture. They have to make sure that breaks down so they can introduce like consumerism everywhere, you know. So no one is spared from this consumerism culture. So our culture is kind of, you know, I, I lived in the United States and I kind of had this experience so many times of that this our culture is completely like goes completely against, completely opposite against the mainstream mainstream American consumer culture. Whereas where, where everyone is trying to be, trying to make it, everyone is trying to be like, you know, the, the king of their own castle. Everyone wants to get the, you know, the American dream, you know, that's the dream, you know, that everyone wants to have, everyone wants to become the master of the realm, wants to become number one in some way, have, at least have the big house, the big picket fence, and, you know, the, send the kids to, the, to Yale or Harvard, you know, like that, or, or become, you know, big, High, high up, very high up in the corporate ladder, or be, at least become very wealthy. I mean, everybody is this American dream. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying our culture. We are trying. We are trying to become the servant of the servant. This is appears to be completely like 
opposite the culture. So we're kind of like, almost like we can, some of them may feel we're like little mouse trying to like, okay, we are devotees. We somehow have to live within this, you know, in the, in this, in the cage of tigers, you know, like that. Or we have to, we are forced to take part in this game and in this rat race. You know, we like, like the, like the disciple of Arjuna, the cobra. Arjuna told the, the cobra not to bite, to kill anymore. And the cobra followed that, but then because he wasn't showing, he, no one was afraid of the, of the cobra. They, the cobra was getting beaten by the village kids. They were saying, oh, this cobra won't bite us. So they were harassing the, became like the number one uh, game of the village for, among the children to, har to harass the cobra, to chase him and beat him and so on. So, and the cobra wouldn't do anything, but he asked them, uh, another the next time, what am I supposed to do? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fear from of my life because I don't bite anymore. And then Nara told him, okay, just show your hood. And then they, they, they will be afraid, but don't bite. So we may have to do that. We may have to show, we may have to convince people that we are just as mean and backstabbing and formidable as them, although we are, we are not because we are devotees. So, but, so we may think that our culture of being the body of Krishna is the subculture. It is, you know, the, what really works in this world is to be mean and pushy and, and, and everything. But this is actually not true. And I'm, I'm saying this because I, I think I am the most guilty of this. I didn't understand the connection of devotion to Krishna to practical life. But actually, if you think about it, everything in this world, what is... How is everything in this world operated? How do your eyes and open and close? How do your fingers move? How does everything, everything in this world, how does it actually even operate? I mean, I'm, you, you don't have to answer this on, uh, by um, unmuting your mic, but I'm just asking you to think about this. How is the world operated? Who are the people, who are the personalities that actually move everything? So what's moving everything is the demigods. So there are, there are 33 million demigods and each demigod is, is, is invested with one department of operating one aspect of this world. Like, like I was saying, opening and closing the eyelids, opening and closing the hand or, you know, your digestion and, and this, the, the rain is coming and the, you know, the, the wind is moving. Uh, every, every, element, every aspect of maturity is operated by a demigod. And what is a demigod? Vishnu Bhakta Smriti Deva. So a demigod is someone who is the devotee of Krishna. So, so in other words, the only reason that demigods can do this because he is the devotee of Krishna. So devotion to Krishna is the operating principle of everything. So I want to repeat this. The devotion to Krishna is the operating principle of everything. The, the demons, they also are powerful, but they don't, they do not operate any any of the natural aspects. They they may operate some some you know like Kali is, is a personality is a demigod of sin. So if you want to be sinful, you want to be a very successful and going to hell at the at the lightning speed, yes, yes, then Kali is there. You know, he's he's that he helps you become like the first class demon, you know, and so you know, but but he does not he does not operate anything else. He operates sin. So the demons are like that. They operate the bad qualities. But, but we are not, you know, we are supposed to be devotees of Krishna, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not the disciples of Kali. So, in other words, if you are a devotee of Krishna, things work for you. And this is what Arjuna is saying here also, that he, he was a devotee of Krishna, everything worked for him. And, all, and even in the mundane sense, everything works because of the devotion of Krishna. So those who worship, those who follow um, the, the, you know, those who follow the Krishna's system of Vedic culture, things work for them because they're following Krishna's system. Even if they don't know who Krishna is, even if they don't know the Vedic system, to the extent they're following the Vedic system, things work for them. And even the devotees who are not devotees of Krishna, but follow the demigods, at least follow the instructions, things work for them maturely. But of course, they don't get Krishna at the end. But if you're the body of Krishna, everything works for you. You get everything material, everything, all the material things work for you, and you get Krishna at the end. And the final point here is 
is this point of Arjuna that his attitude is that uh, although Krishna left the world, even although he had failed to protect the queens of Krishna, so when Krishna, Arjuna went to Dvaraka, the queens of Krishna was, was, were left behind. So he decided to take all of them and bring them to Hastinapur. And on the way, those queens were actually kidnapped by a group of coward men. And Arjuna couldn't do anything. His arrows didn't work, his ashtras didn't work, his bow didn't work, nothing worked. He just watched on as, his, as they walked away. So he was unsuccessful, he was frustrated, but he understood everything as Krishna's will. So in this world, the difference between you know, a devotee and, and someone who's not a, such a good devotee or, not a, or a demon is that devotee sees Krishna's hand in everything. Someone may believe in God, but, as, but he still thinks that everything revolves around me. I am the center, everything revolves around me, including God also revolves about, around me, you know? So, so I go to church, I pray to God, give me this, give me that, and then God gives me so very good. God, God is there to serve me, like just like everyone else is there to serve me. But as soon as things go wrong, then God isn't doing his job. He's the boss of the Roman of revolver on me. I am the center. What is going on? Christ, God is not, he's he's spaced out, or he's just he's just slacking, or he's not doing his job. So the materialists may lose faith in God or may be angry at God, but the body, even he doesn't understand. The plan of the Lord, like Arjuna, things happen. He did not didn't always know what was Krishna's plan. Like they were banished to the forest for 14 years. And they didn't know why, what was why, but they just accepted everything as Krishna's mercy. And they were always Krishna conscious. They were always taking shelter of Krishna. They never became angry with Krishna. You know, and they, I mean, their all their sons were killed. You know, the five sons were killed, Abhimanyu was killed. Not all, I mean, he had two more sons surviving, but they were not living with them. But the point is that they didn't get angry at Krishna. Everything was, they were always surrendered to Krishna. They never, you know, they never doubted Krishna, in other words. So that's the point also that if you want to live by this principle of being always surrendered to Krishna, you also have to always accept that whatever happens to you is for the best. It's always Krishna. You always should see Krishna's hand in everything. And that's real surrender. Real surrender is that you're always surrendered to Krishna, even if you don't know what Krishna's plan is. It's just like a if you if like a, a little child goes to the he, the father takes the little child to the movies. This is one ex, this example was given by one of my gurus, and this was actually a big eye opener for me as a very new devotee to understand to explain what what uh, surrender is. And he was basing this on, on a conversation Prabhupada had with his devotees. Is that surrender Krishna means you ex, you surrender Krishna without even knowing what Krishna's plan is, because we don't, nobody really knows Krishna's plan. No one fully knows that, only Krishna knows his plan. But the, the example my spiritual master explained to me was, uh, explained to us in the class was of, the, of a child being taken to the movie theater by his father. So the child is small and he doesn't know how things work. He does know father is with me, so he has no anxiety. So. Father takes him in a car, and then he goes to the, he picks the ticket, and then he, he puts the kid in a seat, he goes to buy the popcorn, and in the theater, there's so many big people, big people, to the point of view of the kid, they're all big, they're all towering over him, but the child has no fear, you know why, because the father is with me, I have no worry, I have no anxieties, the father is taking care of everything, so the child has no worries, you know, because he, the father is with him, but if the child, for some reason, would somehow enter the theater, on his own, he would get stuck there, and father isn't there. He would be so scared of the big people or everything. He would just be a scared little kid because the father is not there, you know. So the devotee should be like that. That he knows Krishna is is always taking care of him. He is surrounded Krishna, so Krishna in turn takes care of him. Like Prabhupada's name is Abhay Charan Aravinda, one who is fearless at the lotus feet of Krishna. So Prabhupada actually exemplified this quality of fearlessness. You know, even he was asked by his god brothers, they were asking, what, do you, what is the most prominent quality you feel when you chant the holy name? And Prabhupada said, fearlessness. You know, that was Prabhupada. He had no fear. Prabhupada was a fearless person. Abhai, Charan Ramindra. So he was, that name, he, he didn't get that name just by, by some random chance. That name was given to him both by his father and his spiritual master because this was Prabhupada's quality, that he was always fearless at the lotus feet of Krishna. 
So this is the quality. If you want, if you want to be successful in this, both in this world and the next, just be surrounded to Krishna. The worship, surrounded to Krishna, the worship of Krishna is the is the thing that makes everything work anyway. And if in even for the ordinary people who are not devotees of Krishna, if they follow Krishna's system within a, in connection with the Vedic culture, they will be very successful materially. And even they will go to heaven. But the devotee of Krishna, if he is, if he takes the main principle of being surrendered to the supreme operator Krishna, then he will be both successful in this world, just like the Pandavas were the most successful. They got the most unrivaled kingdom. They had the most wonderful experiences of going, like Arjuna going to heaven. And at the same, and at the end, they went to Krishna. They went back to Godhead. So this is the point that. This is the point of, of being devotees, that we are not a subculture. We are actually, we, you know, we are following the culture, the main system of how things work. And we should have faith in that. We should not lose faith. So, is, oh, the time is up. Okay, any questions, comments? Thank you. I didn't realize the time was on. So. Questions, comments, criticisms? Very nice class, Prabhu. Uh, I loved your, you know, that Krishna said that he would miss Arjuna and couldn't live without him in this world. That's a very, you know, exalted statement. We would never think that Krishna would say that about Arjuna, you know. I can say, I think I understand Arjuna saying that about Krishna, but Krishna said that about Arjuna is quite a statement. Uh, and also you said uh, that um, the cobra was asked to lift his hood. I think also in this material world, you can, you can hiss, but you can't bite. You know? <laughs> so I think it was also told that you can hiss, but you shouldn't bite by Narada, I think. Yeah, yeah in the material world, it's funny how materialists, you know, the, the enemies materialists, they respect you if you're if if they see you are not a wimp you know but at the same time exactly yeah you're not at the you're not at the ultimate because you're a devotee at the at the same time they they so much more appreciate oh he is a tough guy but he's not a mean guy he won't like kill me if I stop you know you know what I'm saying so yeah so that's the the Pandavas were like that they were not they were very powerful but you know but they were also very kind you know Mm -hmm. And exactly like, like Parikshit, he was given when he gave shelter to when Kai surrendered to him, Parikshit smiled. Yes, you know, it's because he had all, all the qualities of the Pandavas were in Parikshit. So, you know, these are the devotees are like that. They are powerful, they are, but they are not they are not mean people in, in real, really. Okay, Hare Krishna. Sorry. They have confidence. Yeah, they have confidence, yeah. Yeah, they have confidence that Krishna will protect them maintain them because they're surrendered. But I opened up the class. I was a little late, but I had a pleasant surprise. I had no idea you were giving class. Oh, <laughs> wasn't you arranged it? I didn't know. Very nice. Nice Who arranged it? I think I'm Rita Kaley. Okay. I guess. Yeah, but very nice. Thank you. Wonderful to hear from you. Thank you for accepting my service. <laughs> You shared very nice realizations, Prabhu. Very nice. Well, let me bless me, I may practice them. <laughs> Just from speaking because I'm trying to make this, I'm trying to remember those points myself. By preaching them, I remember them better. Now, Bhaktivedya Purn Maharaj, is it a German, German Swami? No. Your Shiksha Guru, you said? No, um, you know, he is back to the point. Is, he is my my original spiritual master is Suhoto Swami. He is actually he's actually born in Massachusetts, but he lived around the, lived around the world because his father was in the army. But he he joined in, in Boston, Massachusetts. I think Piari knows him because he also was there in, in Boston, um, and and he later settled in Europe in the late 70s because he was preaching in the library party and then he just ended up staying in Europe uh, and spent most of his time in Europe and India. So I became his disciple. Then later on he put me in a gurukul 
where his very dear friend Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj was. Bhaktivedya Purnamaraj is called sometimes called Guru Kul Swami because he he um, he is the headmaster or like the head teacher of the Guru Kul still today. He's from the US. So he's from the US. He's from uh, yeah. He joined in the, uh, somewhere in the, on the Midwest. You know. My son has uh, St. Louis, he's a German son, St. Louis. Yeah. So they, uh, they are American, both my gurus. And then I'm to now initiate by Radna Sami, he's also American from Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jiva, did he come to our temple once? Yes, he did. Yeah. Bhakti, Bhakti Vidya Purna Swami, not yeah. Swami. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 yeah. He gave me a, he, he gave me a very nice analogy I think one time where I, I liked what he said. He was talking about a miser, you know. He told me like a miser, you know, Kriparna is such that even if he's drowning, he said that um, his brain is wired in such a way that he doesn't want to give anything. Even if he's drowning, the person who's trying to save him cannot say give me your hand, he has to say, take my hand. <laughs> and then he will take it, but otherwise he'll think for a second and might drown, you know, if you say, give me your hand, because a miser does not want to give, even if he's drowning, he doesn't think about giving his hand. He, the other person trying to save him has to say, take my hand. <laughs> yeah, Pierre, I mean, uh, back to the one where she actually said to me when I was moving, to Hartford. He said, oh yeah, very nice. He, he really liked Piari also. He said he's very, he's very like uh, balanced, you know, he knows how to, he's friendly with the congregation. You know? Anyway, he had very good things to say about Hartford from that visit. Mm -hmm. Anyone else has a question, comment, criticism? How are you all doing? You were going to speak a little bit about yourself. <laughs> you know, that was part of the class. Uh, we are, by Krishna's mercy, we are, you know, Krishna is, like I said, his blessing is more than we can take almost. We are kind of, we are very like, uh, we are just two people. And personally, I'm like the most spaced out person and slow and everything. But somehow, Krishna think of this working out because Krishna's mercy. That's another thing, you know. You surrender Krishna, even if you're, Somewhat useless. Krishna can still make things somehow happen, you know. Yeah. So materially, from a material point of view, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we are actually about to open. We're trying to open a restaurant here. Uh, we Krishna arranged that we somehow got the property to do that, and the property is actually right below this apartment on the bottom floor. So, um, and it's very good actually, good location. It just somehow it just. We realized it was, sale, it was for sale, and somehow we were able to somehow, with devotees' help, try and we were able to secure the property for ISKCON. And now we are trying to renovate it to open a restaurant in, in, in a month or two. So, nice. Main preaching because the people here are very far from like traditional culture, but food is something they can relate to. So, this will be like the main point of our preaching. And then we will also have it's a good venue for having public programs. Because now currently we are doing the programs up here in the apartment and not many people are comfortable coming to someone's apartment. But as soon as the venue becomes like a public uh, place, just right, they just have to step in from the street into a public venue, then a lot more people may feel comfortable to attend our programs. And we can also promote the programs more widely because of that. So, so things are gonna happen, I mean, hopefully happen. If, if I don't completely, um, blow it up. If, I, the only thing that can happen is, even if, anyway, I, I'm saying even if I try to, maybe Krishna, this will make it happen, even if I try and get in the way. But anyway, <laughs> I, I just feel that we may be successful without it. With the Buddhist blessings, everything is possible. So, so the Arupa is going to cook for the restaurant? <laughs> the Arupa? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, really, it's really funny because, you know, I mean, you, I don't know how many know, but I've been thinking and planning for a restaurant for like over 10 years now, or about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I have so many ideas and this and that, but I realized like that, even though I have this strong desire, like my body can't physically take it. Cause I, I mean, it was 
<laughs> like for Janmashmi for like, you know, 15, 20 people here. And like, by the end of the day, I'm like completely in pain from like head to toe. <laughs> so my husband's like, well, you know, in order to run a restaurant, you have to like, you know, be very strong physically. And mm -hmm. I, I, I will be the main cook. Yeah. He'll be the main cook. And I mean, I, it is funny because she's saying 10 years she had to run. I have been thinking of the restaurant for like 25 years because... <laughs> So what was Sami told me, after, because in 1992, the devotees from Germany had printed a book, uh, Easy Journey to Other Planets, in Icelandic, and they came to Iceland to distribute this book, to try to exhaust the book, stock of books. And at the same time, they were trying to establish a center, and somehow it wasn't successful. Uh, just because, uh, they were mainly just doing book distribution and some programs, but... but uh, my grandma told me that if they had used the same amount of effort and money to start a restaurant, they would have easily started a center because they, he said he had told the, he had told the devotees from Germany like five years earlier that the only thing that will be successful in Iceland is, is a restaurant. So at that time I got the seat, I have to open a restaurant one day in Iceland. So sometimes people would ask me, now, what, what would you do if you would win, like, if you, someone would give you a million dollars or something? He said, ah, I would open a restaurant in Iceland. That was always, like, the first answer. So I always had this passion. And then my wife, when I got married, my wife kept talking about, I want to open a restaurant. I want to open a persona business, you know. And I was telling her, you know, how are you going to do that? I mean, if you, you know, she was going to give up her job and buy a food truck and drive it around Connecticut <laughs> to... This is not a good business idea. I mean, maybe it's fun, but it's it's going to be very tough, you know. But as soon as we, but now somehow this here's desire, it, it completely fitted with my ultimate goal of opening a restaurant in Iceland. And now Krishna has arranged we got a property that is suitable for that. And uh, but but I have to be the one physically cooking every day. She can also help. She can make yeah, the, the sweets, the and sweets, and, and some savories or something like that. But you know, but yeah, but I don't mind. I also know how to cook. I you know, it's something anyway. Oh yeah, cakes. Yeah, they are pa. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like prasadam to attract people. Nothing like that. Nothing. Yeah, that's like true. It's, it's really yeah. like people love it. We've been yeah. done so much home, like you know, catering kind of mm -hmm. friends and extended friends and family and stuff, and people love it. So I also realize the programs here. If they wouldn't have this prasad and they people wouldn't be coming, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they, that's the only thing that keeps them hooked to yeah. coming again and again. And then but that hook keeps them like keeps them stuck, you know, on the program and, and by gradually they hear the healing and chanting the about Hare Krishna and, and then they start chanting also at some point too. That happened mm -hmm. actually one came and he started after two years he started chanting 16 rounds and he, he told me then he told us. The only reason I came was because of the food, and nothing, no other reason. Yeah. So, so it's That's very, very, weapon. it's really the, it's very, very, it's like Prabhupada said, it's our most powerful weapon. The, uh, it's greatest, gone bullets, yeah. <laughs> our greatest weapon is for certain, Prabhupada said that. Um, yeah. He said, what did he say? Weapon. Sorry. Prasad, he, Prabhupada said, Prasadam is our greatest weapon. Mm -hmm. This is from Sodor So I'm quoting from him who quoted Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. I have on mm -hmm. the quote, but. I trust my spiritual master. He wouldn't quote something like that. Uh, <laughs> but so he said, you know, the books are the basis. Books are like, but he said those two things. Books are, you know, the are the most important. Uh, but the greatest weapon is prasadam also, you know, because they actually work together. Because like in Romania, where Sorosami has established a center, they were doing books, but not many people were joining. And he's, then he told the devotees, you have to start a prasadam business because by eating the prasadam, people will get the brain to understand the books. Mm -hmm. So the yes. prasadam is so important just because people, it gives you good brain, like good fine brain tissue, whatever. You get the, the, the capacity to understand the philosophy. So prasadam is so important. These two together are very important. They work together. Yeah. You can see this in Darius too. <laughs> yeah, so, and I just, you know, so if you want to, that can be the next phase of pitching in Hartford area. Open some kind of a prasadam distribution program, restaurant or something like that, lunch program. I know. That's a that's long time kitchen. coming, huh? <laughs> now you, you're getting this approved kitchen, this commercial kitchen in that yeah, new... Yeah, yeah. 
So then you can use that as a, to cook for any, right. for the public, you know, you can, you can even cook for, a, if you had a downtown, like, if you had a small place downtown with, that didn't have a kitchen, this would be approved to cook for that downtown place, you know, so you don't need to, I'm just saying it's, it opens a lot of opportunities to, Right. I just thought of something. Jiva, there's a taste of Hartford every year. You know, of course, now with the COVID, it's not there. We yeah, could open the, yeah. You have to have like this kitchen behind all those things. So that's, yeah. uh, that's the idea now we can. Yeah. It, it's been such a hassle to get this kitchen. Uh, it's one thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. We have such high rules here because we follow the European Union in Iceland. So there's so many rules and restrictions and this and that and oh my god it's like yeah and just we think we have it it's another thing you know we got to do this whole big thing now yeah and the big thing is the fire code also that's right a very big thing exactly no and then you have to keep up the standard also right for inspections and all that yeah yeah and everyone has to be trained which is good you know which is really good they have to take a course and get it certified or whatever, mm -hmm. which is good. And yep, let's see. Well, thank you. It's good seeing you guys. Have, it's been maybe about four years at least, it looks like. Yeah, I wish we could see everyone else. Everyone's uh, off <laughs> video. <laughs> no, no, do that. Oh. That's because we're all home in our grind. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Just my face. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Are you in California, Gitama? No, I'm in cold Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But California was really nice. I got to know so many wonderful devotees. It just made me feel that no matter where you go in the world, there is a huge ISKCON center and these wonderful devotees, you know. The devotees there in Laguna Beach worship uh, the Panchatattva and they're so yeah. dedicated to the Panchatattva. Wow. And their book distribution is like amazing, amazing, because they have uh, influence from Vaisheshika Prabhu, very direct influence from Vaisheshika Prabhu. Yeah. Their book distribution is like amazing, amazing. And they have so many vegan programs, so many, so many, you know, when there's no COVID, they have like hundreds of programs yeah. that they can actually yeah. distribute books. Yeah, yeah. We have family everywhere. Yes. Yeah, we have family we have, everywhere. We have family in Iceland too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need to make more or have more because we are all alone. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, very nice that you're doing so well and, uh, you know, all glories to all your programs. I hope they all work out. Krishna's it's Krishna's arrangement at the same time we feel like we're not doing anything <laughs> there's like so many things we could be doing and I'm like always like pushing him okay we have to do this we have to do that and then, you it's know but prog it's, it's, it's progressive it takes a long time to get established you know yeah and then you know it's like it's really hard because you have your own sadhana that you have to you know maintain and follow and there's so many other things that you, as devotees, that we have to do. That yeah, you have family also that you're taking care of and helping yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Like his mother, his mother recently we took a. She was not well, so took up a lot of our time. So we're kind of delayed with this restaurant thing because of that also. Mm -hmm. so yeah, but it's all slowly coming together. Very nice, very nice, very nice seeing you both.